Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tom Carter, and welcome to Sports Street. I'm joined here by my colleagues, Austin Swerville and Anthony Rossi. The Denver Broncos beat the Carolina Panthers 24 to 10 in Super Bowl 50 Sunday. Peyton, Austin, do you think this is uh, Peyton's last dance in the Broncos uniform? Uh, you know, Peyton, this might be his last dance. He rode off into the sunset. I think he's going to follow always uh, footsteps. He'd be only the second quarterback ever to uh, walk away from the game with a Super Bowl victory. So uh, I think he made it clear on Sunday, you know, that uh, he's still going to think about it. But I don't think Denver's going to want him back, especially after Brock Osweiler played this year and he played pretty decent without him there. Um, I think he's done. Really? So, uh, Anthony, uh, what do you think happened with Carolina? They didn't play well. Cam Newton didn't play well. The, their offense really didn't look good. Denver was all over him. They're sacking him. Just didn't look like the Carolina wanted the game as bad as Denver did. There was a time in the end of the game where Cam Newton fumbled the ball, and if they lose the ball there, there's no chance for them to win this game. And he just walked, kind of got away from the ball, didn't really make an effort to go in and get the, the ball in the scrum. He's, he's six foot six. He's big. It's not like he's five foot ten little quarterback is going to get hurt. He can get in there, but he didn't put in that extra effort that you need to put there to win the Super Bowl. I believe he may have been a little injured. Um, how you, what did you think about uh, them making the win of the Super Bowl with not an offensive touchdown? They have not scored an offensive touchdown in the Super Bowl. Well, they scored. I mean, C.J. Anderson Excuse scored. They me. just didn't passing. have any passing touchdowns. Um, you know what? I honestly thought that's how the whole game would go. Um, definitely staying away from the pass was probably in best interest of Peyton. It's not like he can't throw the ball. He just can't throw it deep, and that's where they got beat. I mean, Josh Norman shut down Desmarius Thomas simply because of the fact that Peyton Manning can't really throw accurately past 35 yards. So it helped there that C.J. Anderson had a pretty good game. He had about 90 rushing yards, and he had that touchdown. And uh, the defense definitely helped Peyton. There was, there was no shot that they had. They, they would have no shot at all in the Super Bowl if Denver's defense didn't play the way they did. Von Miller was a nightmare for them. Did, what did you, how much problems do you think he caused him himself? He, he was a huge part of that game. I mean, he changed everything. He was getting getting everywhere, getting in everyone's face, just making plays that you're going to do if you're going to want to win a Super Bowl, putting that extra effort out there, the 110%, which we need to do, because it's the last game of your season. And that's, that's what takes away the Super Bowl. It's defense that will win you a championship. I think one thing that you have to add to that is Von Miller's been boiling for two years. Right. He was injured and suspended right. that year when they made it at Super Bowl 48 and got destroyed by Seattle. So the one point is this was his game. It really was, and he definitely made his point in it as well. So back to number 18, um, do you think he'll be returning in a Denver Broncos uniform, though? Or do you think he'll probably be on the sideline doing other things? If there's any chance that he's returning, he's returning somewhere else, and I don't think he wants to play for anybody else. He's done. I think there's 100% chance he's retiring. So you're saying he possibly will retire, not going to another team? Yeah, he's done. He's done. He, if he's playing anywhere that he wants to play, it's in Denver. And I don't think Denver is going to want him to play after the season with, with the salary that he holds. Let's put it that way. Yeah, not even just the salary, the, the interception, the touchdown ratio we had this season was probably the bottom of the NFL, if you ask me. I'm not sure about that one, but he didn't look, didn't look good. He's, he was there just because he's a veteran, not because he was throwing the ball better than Brock Osweiler. All right, awesome. We're going to send it off to the Anthony Rossi with our daily fantasy. Thanks, Tom. This is DFS365. This week I'm going to talk about last week's hot players, starting with Kevin Durant. His last 35 games, he's had 20-plus points. And since January 24th, he's had 32.8 points average a game. Next, we're going to talk about Kobe Bryant, who he's been injured. He's been dealing with a shoulder injury. But also, on FanDuel, he has been averaging 39.1 fantasy points a game for the last five games. Also, at center, we got Nikolai Jokic, plays for Denver. He comes off the bench most of the time. Sometimes he starts. It's a really interesting situation, but even when he gets 19, 20 minutes, a lot of times he's putting up 35, 40 fantasy points. He's averaging 16 points and 10 rebounds a game right now. It's very good. If he gets a couple more minutes, he's someone you really want to pick up. Also, Gorgao Deng is averaging 18 points and 11 rebounds a game. He's playing power forward right now. Uh, Kevin Garnett, as long as he keeps staying out of the games, you've got to start him. He had 55 fantasy points 
last week, and he's a big part of the offense. Also, on the Pistons, Stanley Johnson. As long as Pope stays out, Stanley Johnson, you got to start. He's been averaging 32.2 fantasy points a game when Pope has been out of the lineup. The players you want to watch are Bryce Jones on New Orleans. It's 3500 the minimum salary on FanDuel. He's been starting at shooting guard since Tyreek Evans has been out. As long as Evans is out, you got to start him. Also, Archie Goodwin. He's been starting at point guard, and he's been doing great. He's had a couple 35, 40 point performances, but he's also had a couple of rough ones, but for his value, he's very good. And that's it for DS DFS 365. If you have any questions, you can contact me at Rossi DFS on Twitter. Back to you, Tom. Good job, Anthony. Our next segment, Order in the Court, where our analysts are going to assume the roles of athletes. Austin Swerple here is going to assume the role of Seth Curry, and um, Anthony Rossi is going to assume the role of LeBron James. And we're going to have a debate to find out who's the best player in the NBA. Austin, your open statement. Steph Curry is killing the NBA as of right now, especially in the season of 15-16, and that's what we're focusing on is this year. This year, he's shooting over 90% from, from free throw line. He's shooting over 50% from the, th from the three-point line. He's a three-point king. He's already had, he already has the record that he got last year of most three-pointers made in a season. This year, he's only 50 away and it's almost the all-star break. He still has about 40 more games to get 50 more three-pointers, which he'll get easy within about 15 to 20. Um, people can say LeBron James is bigger, which he is. He can drive to the paint a little harder, but you know what? Steph Curry is a little small, and that makes it a challenge for defenses as well. Right now in the NBA, Steph Curry probably is the best player on one of the best teams, and that's what makes the difference between Steph Curry and LeBron James right now. So what do you think about that, uh, Anthony? I think LeBron James is a better player. He's been in the league for 12 years, twice as long as Steph Curry. He's averaging 27.2 points per game. He's averaging 7 assists per game, 7.1 rebounds per game, 1.7 steals per game, and 0.8 blocks per game. Also, he was a 2004 NBA Rookie of the Year. He was a five-time NBA Defensive Man of the Year. Nine-time NBA all-star first team, 12-time NBA All-Star, two-time NBA champion, and two-time NBA final MVP. All of these things, which except the only two categories Steph Curry is beating in are steals and it's by 0.1 and by assists by 2.4, but he is a point guard so that's expected. Also, LeBron James in comparison in playoffs to Michael Jordan in the first 10 playoff appearances for both of them, he has almost 1,000 more points than Michael Jordan. He has 750 more rebounds than Michael Jordan. He has more assists, more steals, and more blocks than Michael Jordan, who's known as one of the greatest basketball players to man. And James, he just he blows it out of the water. He's been to the playoffs many times. He, he has a team, but the team's nowhere near Golden State's capability. Everyone's covering LeBron James. If you're against Golden State, you got to cover Draymond Green, you got to cover Thompson, you got to cover more than one guy. But LeBron James is the biggest and one of the only threats on Cleveland, in my opinion. So, what do you believe like is that big separator between the two? Is it the championship rings? Is it the team they surround them? What really defines them as being the greatest? The biggest separator right now, and. I kind of go off of what you said with Steph Curry does get man-to-man -man coverage more or less than LeBron can be double teamed on occasion. But Steph Curry takes over a game like I have never seen before. Just last week or two weeks ago, he played a game against Washington where he put up 25 points in the first quarter. And some of the shots he, were, he was taking, it seemed like you'd see in a Harlem Globetrotters game. It was ridiculous. He grabs the ball, he steals the ball from almost half court and shoots it up. And that's the problem that people are having with Steph Curry right now is he's no longer just making three-pointers. He's stepping back about 10 feet beyond the three-point line and still making them. It, it's almost insane to see. And LeBron James, yes, he has more, he has more seasons on Steph Curry. But right now, Steph Curry is beating every, anybody and everybody one-on-one. -on -one. Do you believe LeBron is going to bring a championship to Cleveland, though? His greatness going to build a championship there? 
Of, of course he is. He's, he's been carrying the team. He's always the guy. Even though Steph Curry has the one-on-one -on -one and he changes the game, if, if LeBron James had that one-on-one, -on -one, he could score 60 points a game. No one's going to stop him one-on-one. -on -one. Steph Curry, people have stopped him. He has had bad games against good defensive point guards. Um, also, LeBron James has been in, in there twice as many years as Steph Curry. And the comparison in all-star games and uh, first-team votes, defensive teams, is drastic. It's a nine-time NBA first team compared to one to Steph Curry and a 12-time NBA all-star at the three. And that's why he's the king. Thank you, gentlemen. That was great. Next, we're going to get into the Detroit Lions and Calvin Johnson. Earlier in the month, reports stated that Calvin Johnson is considering retiring and walking away from the game after giving Detroit many years of great services and catches. Um, what do you guys take on that? Do you think he's going to retire after the season? I think right now, and I think Peyton Manning said it best earlier this week on Sunday, that he's making the emotional decision. I think right now his body's hurting, the season's over, he's not feeling too well. I think once we get in a little bit, you know, May, June, training camp starts up again, his mind's going to change a little bit. But the only problem is, and it's a big problem, is the Lions are running into salary cap issues. Mm -hmm. If he retires, they open up a little bit more salary cap. And especially with this week right now that we're starting on, the Lions can start making moves for free agency and cutting players. And if we start, there's been rumors that we're going to cut Stephen Tulloch, Joyke Bell, even Brandon Pettigrew to open up salary cap so that we can get other players. But if Kelvin retires, then we can try retaining one or two of those guys because it opens up the salary cap a little bit more. So the Lions are running into the problem right now where Kelvin Johnson needs to make a decision. They don't want to rush him, but it is a rush decision at this moment, especially with the draft around the corner as well. Do you feel as if like they believe he's somewhat becoming useless to them and they'd rather him retire, or do you think that they could possibly make some work something out whereas they could possibly keep him? No, I think the Lions want him back, 100%. He, he's still a deep threat. He's still Calvin Johnson. You're still going to have to put a safety at least hovering over him. Um, I think the, the biggest problem right now is just the salary cap, and he needs to just make the decision. I don't think the Lions mind letting Joyke Bell go. I don't think they mind letting Brandon Pettigrew go. I think Tulloch's a tough decision, but I don't think they mind letting him go either. But if he leaves, they can retain those guys. I think they're, they're borderline right now. I think their biggest problem right now is the draft. You know, right now you're going to have the combine coming around the corner and stuff, and you're going to run into situations where if he's still borderline retiring or not, they don't know where to roll in the draft. And if they draft a wide receiver and then they retain Calvin Johnson, what's the point of drafting a wide receiver at that point? So what do you think, Anthony? Do you think uh, Megatron will be back? You know, Austin made a very good point about the emotional decision that he's making right now, but, you know, Calvin Johnson, I know for a fact, is a very good man. He has family. He doesn't want to spend the rest of his life, you know, if he keeps going, if he plays 10 more years, who knows? What if he doesn't walk when he's 45? Right. What if things like that, things like that are things you got to think about when you're playing NFL. There's so many injuries now, even concussions, everything. It's life-threatening almost, you know. They, you know, he's made plenty of money and he's enjoyed his career there. I know, I'm sure he wants to win a championship, but he hasn't really been healthy for a long time now like as every season he's got knee problem ankle problem this that you know if he wants to play I think he wants to be at 100% and he knows at this point I think he knows he might not be 100% ever again so I don't know if he will want to play again and maybe spend more time with his family instead right I think they need to make some changes all around on their roster really as far as even outside of just him in which where if they stack their team with some good players some role players that are pick up the weight for him. He's working himself too hard. He's going into too much traffic. He's getting hit too many times, making too many compromising catches. His career could be, his body could be bothering him at this point, where maybe he do need to make that decision now. You know, I agree with Rossi. I, I, I do. I think injuries is a big problem. His ankles are starting to become a problem. And that may be the one thing with playing a couple more seasons, is his ankles could just get worse. I don't think he wants that. Thank you for watching Sports Streets. I'm Tom Carter. Catch you next week.